All right, everyone, thanks for joining us for this week's webinar, Preparing for Back to School Online Registration. I am joined, this is, my name's Denise Drew, and I'm joined by Rachel Cox. Rachel, would you like to say hello? Sorry, I couldn't find my unmute button. Yes, I would love to say hello. Uh, my name is Rachel Cox. I am on the support to training team here at JMC. I've been at JMC for about a year. Um, I live in West Central Minnesota. I come to JMC after spending a little over a decade in the college classroom and then a few years as an elementary administrator. Wonderful. Can you uh, tell me if Amy's on with us today? Yeah, Amy's with us. Hello, Amy. Can you tell us a little about yourself? Hi there, made it in. Um, my name is Amy Bemis. I was a high school counselor for 20 some years. Um, just joined JMC last fall. I live in southwestern Iowa in a small town called Dunlap. Perfect. Okay, we've got a wealth of knowledge here, but I'll be the one training you with little knowledge. Just kidding. Well, hang in there. <laughs> JMC Office offers online registration tools to help office professionals manage the hectic back to school period. Today, we're going to walk through preparing for back to school registration, beginning with granting the appropriate admin permissions. Once permissions are set, you can begin customizing your JMC family portal message and settings. Then you can create custom field questions and custom health questions. And finally, prepare signable forms for downloadable content to move online registration into full swing. So if you have any questions, go ahead and type them in the question and answer session, and we will get to them at the end of each section. Granting admin permissions. Provide office professionals the ability to access specific modules required for preparing online registration. With personalized privileges, users can be granted either read only or make changes access to custom field questions, student data, and online registration settings. This flexibility will allow for efficient collaboration and streamlined registration process. By providing office users with the necessary access, you can empower them to successfully complete registration tasks and ensure a smoother registration experience for all. So to begin, we log into JMC Office as a JMC admin and navigate to File, Application Security to adjust permissions for JMC Office users. Step one, you click the username for the person that you want to change access to and give them privileges. Uh, click a username in the user box and begin adjusting privileges for the selected user. Step two, you select full access from the JMC administrator dropdown list to grant the selected user access to define custom fields page. Step three, click the make changes or read only from the attendance dropdown list to grant the selected users access to the form signatures page in JMC family. Step four, select the make changes from the student general data dropdown list to grant the selected users access to online JMC settings and merge data pages in JMC office. Step five, click the save button to update the selected users access privileges. So a helpful tip, after online registration configuration is completed, you can readjust the user privileges to revoke any temporary granted JMC administrator access. Let's take a live look at granting admin permissions. There we go. Um, so again, we're at the home page here and we're going to go to file application security. We're going to pick out the user that we want to do our um, our JMC family registration information. I'll pick myself and in the, oh, this is the district level. Let's go into this one. All right, you wanna make sure that you have full access for the administrator options. You wanna make sure that you have, so there's like four items that I want you guys to make sure that you have. The first one is admin, that has to be full access. The second one is attendance. So you can either do make changes or read only those two. Then we go on to the third one, the general tab. 
student general data, and you have either make changes or read only. And then you save to do those four things that will grant you access to start doing the online registration. All right. Do we have any questions? No questions so far. All right. Customizing the family portal message. When families log into the JMC family port or JMC family portal, greet them with a personalized message from you. Use your message to provide clear instructions that guides family through the online registration process, and also include information reminders about upcoming schools and events and closures, as well as important end of the school year announcements. You can also include links to the school resources, such as free and reduced forms, extracurricular information, and school board minutes. So families have access to important information at their fingertips. By providing them with this information up front, you can keep the families in your district informed about what's happening at the school. Log in to JMC office at the district level and head to JMC family district login message to update the message displayed in the JMC family. Step one, select the correct school year using the switch year drop down list to make changes to your messages message for the new school year. Step two, enter the message in the comments field to display the JMC family homepage greeting that family homepage greeting families as they log in. Fun fact, you can do a little pizzazz and update things with different font sizes and colors and everything. It's a lot of fun. And then click the save button when you're all done so that your message will be viewable to families. So let's take a live look at this. Let's go the other way. There we go. So again, from the home page, we head down to the district level, JMC family, district login message. District level, JMC family, district login message. And there it is. And you could put whatever you want. And then that will be viewable to families. So if I save this, and I refresh my screen in the families, you can see that that was just added in there, which we probably don't want to keep. So I'll go ahead and delete that out. There. And now I'm going to save it again. And refresh my screen. And as you can see, it changed it. So that's just exactly what the family sees as they are logging in. And Denise, we, we have a question here, and I was actually going to offer a, a question myself. Um, Glenn is wondering if the welcome message can be customized per school, but this is actually a district wide message. So this would go out to all schools in the district. When we get a little bit further into setting up the online registration, you'll see where there is some more building specific stuff. So I think we'll get to what you're looking for, Glenn. Um, but one thing that I just maybe wanted to point out is that while we're talking about online registration today, this district message, it would be great to keep that fresh and keep it updated because every time families log into the JMC you know, family portal, updating it throughout the year is just gonna help keep them informed like Denise was talking about in some of those earlier slides. So updating it to reflect school board minutes or if you, you know, have some big school event coming up, I'd like, thinking graduation now as the years the year is coming to a close. So updating that district message throughout the year will just help your um, help keep your families informed. Perfect. Thank you, Rachel. And thank you for answering Glenn's question. Yes, we are going to get to that. Well, I, I'm assuming that was the only questions. That was it. All righty. Then we'll head on to customizing online registration settings and updating district settings. To simplify the online registration process for families, JMC office users district-wide registration set, wait a minute here. To simplify the online registration process for families, 
JMC office offers district-wide registration settings to allow you to customize on-screen prompts and grant family access to important student data elements. By providing clear instructions on what tasks need to be completed before the start of the school year, you can help families navigate the registration process with ease. Customizing your online registration settings can also streamline the process for collecting student information. Save time and effort for both of your both your office and your families. So in JMC office, log into the building, and this is what we're talking about, Glenn here, and head to JMC Family Online Registration Setup Configuration Options to begin customizing the online registrations. Step one, you click the to expand the district setting link to view all settings. Step two, click. Uh, the click to expand start instructions for families settings link to view the message displayed on the instructions tab that begins the registration process. Enter the instructions for the families in the district wide start instructions for families families field to direct families on how to proceed with the online registration process. And again, you can add a little pizzazz to your instructions using the formatting tools, fonts, weight, size, sky's the limits, even insert a link by using the globe icon. And that is what Rachel was just talking about with the um, school board minutes. You can also, you know, add links in here and stuff, or you could actually do it on the homepage too, couldn't you, Rachel? Or am I wrong on the district page? Yep, you could do it in both spots. Okay, yeah. So you'd want to, if it was a school board meetings, you'd probably want to do it on the district page, not this uh, page. Step four, click the click to expand finished instructions for family settings link to view the message displayed on the finish tab as families conclude online registration process in JMC family. Step five, enter the instructions in the district wide finish instructions for families field to communicate any next steps as families finish entering online registration information. Step six, click the click to expand family permission settings link to view the district wide family permission settings. Step seven, place a check mark in the allow parents contacts to submit parent contact information and turn on registration process. Check uh, process, check box to allow families access to online registration. Whew. Step eight, place a check mark in the allow parent contacts to view parent contact information check box to permit families to view or edit their contact information. So basically, put the check marks in the check boxes. Step nine, place a check mark in the allow parents contacts to answer digital equity remote learning questions check box, if applicable, to include a digital equity questionnaire as part of the online registration process. Helpful tip? Check with your state's Department of Education requirements for guidance on including the digital equity questionnaire as a part of the online registration. Rachel, do you know if it's still required in Minnesota after the pandemic? I am not certain. How about you, Amy? Do you know for Iowa? I do not know that, Denise. Yeah, so you'll have to check with your no. state on that. Step 10, click the click to expand application for educational benefit settings link to view the district wide free and reduced meals application information setting. Step 11, place a check mark in the allow parents contacts to access the online application for educational benefits checkbox to allow families to submit an application for free and reduced meals online. Step 12, click the save button to save your district setting changes. Helpful tip, click the click to collapse district settings link to hide your district settings for easier navigation before moving on to your next building settings. So let's take a live look. Boy, I'm gonna need your help ladies on where I was for that. So first I think it said log into your building and then go to JMC family, online registration, setup, configuration options. Am I correct so far? You got it, Denise, you're doing Ooh. great. Then we're gonna click to expand the district settings. Click to expand start instructions for families. Now this is per building. Mm -hmm. So actually, Denise, this one is still district wide. 
This, oh, um, yes, it is. Yep. And the reason would be if you have a student who, like, as a, as a mom, I've got a kiddo in middle school and I've got one in high school. I can still go in and register both kids at the same time because this, this information goes out to everybody in the district. So I think the next part that we get into, um, yeah, down below, that's anything that you are changing and updating at the building level, which we'll get into next. That completely makes sense now that you say it that way, because yes, you just want to register all of your kids at once. Thank you for saying that. Um, so you can, again, type in here and change anything that you want. And we do the little pizzazz here. We made blue. Um, and then we have um, links that you can click to download the free and reduced application. And da, 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 da. this is on that page. Next one, it says, uh, the finish instructions. So when the parents go through this, and again, the next webinar will show you the family side on doing this. But when the, the parents go through this, then they'll be able to um, see this message when they have clicked all the way through. And it will say, thank you for registering for the, well, we need to update that 24. Oops. 25 school year, we're looking forward to having your students at school. You could put in whatever message you want, make it your, your district, your own thing. And then we're going to click to expand the family permission. You're going to have to, if you want them to be able to submit any contact information, you'll have to have this box checked. Parent and contact. Need, yes. Sorry to cut you off. That first box too, that's the important one because that turns on online registration. So if you're still um, configuring this, you know, all of your instructions for the next year, like at this time of the year, while you're still working on it, you would probably want that box unchecked. And then once you've got everything good to go, it looks the way you want it, then go ahead and turn on the registration process. Right. Because now if I come into here and you're still working on the 24-25 um, registration, uh, registration. Oh, feedback there. Um, Wait, oh, I have to refresh my screen. That's right, to not give myself privileges here. Oh. All right, I think, tell me if I'm right here, Rachel. So register, well, I just shut it off though. Did you save your settings of click save at the bottom? That I did. There you go. Let's try that again. See if we're correct. All right, well, let me go back home. So I think it, I do think that it lets parents see some, yeah, if you notice the first, the first option should is usually um, start the registration process and now you have custom fields. So it does let you as a, a parent, like update some of your information, but it doesn't actually let you start the registration process until that's turned on. Go ahead and turn it back on, Denise, and you should see that you'll get another option at the top of that list on the family side. All right, let's give that a try. Yep. See, now it says start slash continue the registration process. Ah, there you go. And that is going to show you all the messages and stuff. Thank yep. you so much mm -hmm. for that. Um, let's see. What else do we have? The allow parents and contacts to view parent contact information and then allow parent contact uh, to answer digital equity remote learning questions. Okay. So again, while you're creating all your questions and such, shut this off. Because like Rachel said, you don't want somebody logging on and then seeing things as you're as you're changing them. Um, did we do the application for educational benefits on this one, Rachel? Yeah. Yep, go ahead and walk So around. then you, you click to expand. Now, just so you know, most of the states do not have their application for educational benefits um, forms ready for us to put onto JMC until June? maybe July. So yeah. if, if the URL isn't there, as you can see, it's not, so they won't really be able to click to do anything. That's because we haven't received it from the state. And we are very astute about making sure that we are on top of that. And as soon as it comes out, we get it in there for you. Then you'd fill out who the eligibility official is and homelessly is on all of that stuff. And you could just read through that. Let's see. And 
think that's it for the district I settings. Yeah. Okay. Did I show about the um, when you're done what it'll, it will say? Did I show that yet? Um, the finish instructions. Yep. Yeah. yeah. All right. Okay. So now you can show how you can collapse all those district settings so that in your next step, when you go to work in your uh, building settings, there you go, then you, your page doesn't get so long. <laughs> yeah, you get you get really confused and everybody gets upset when they're like, I, I can't find it now. Just yeah. unclick it, collapse it. Very good point, Rachel. Let me now figure out how to collapse them all. <laughs> there we go. Okay, and how about uh, questions? Do we have any, or wait, maybe I'm not done yet. Yeah, I was. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, any questions? No. Nope. Wonderful, let's move on. Updating building settings, which we just kind of showed you that already. Um, no, so this is what Glenn was talking about, if I'm not mistaken, Rachel. JMC Office uh, provides the flexibility to tailor the online registration process for students in a, in a specific building by using customizable building level registration settings. This allows families to conveniently view and edit important student information, such as emergency contacts, phone numbers, license plate numbers, and race ethnicity data from the comfort of their very own home from their computer. Additionally, families can answer custom and health questions, making it easier to collect necessary information before the start of the school year by providing families with the ability to update their students' information at their convenience. You can ensure that student data is accurate and up-to-date while also simplifying the registration process for them. So at the building level in JMC Office, you navigate to JMC Family, Online Registration, Setup, configuration options to begin customizing the building specific online registrations. Step one, click to expand your school name setting link to view all the building online registration settings. Step two, click to expand family access settings link to view all building family access online registration settings. Step three, place a check mark in the allow emergency contact edits checkbox to allow families to enter new emergency contacts and edit the existing emergency contact information. Step four, place a check mark in the allow new students addition checkbox to allow new families to enter demographic information about students who are new to the school. Step five, place a check mark in the allow health registration checkbox to allow families to answer health custom field questions for each of their students. Helpful tip, place a check mark in the allow new student addition checkbox during the kindergarten roundup to allow families to enter their new kindergarten student information. I know a lot of schools prefer not to have that one checked. Remove the check mark from the allow student addition checkbox during the summer online registration to prevent families from re-entering information for their students already enrolled. So I'll explain that to you when we get to the live look. So Rachel, y'all have to remind me the reason that you don't necessarily, while they're registering, want them to add new students. Gotcha. Step six, click the click to expand general data settings link to view all building general data online registration settings. Step seven, which is optional, place a check mark in the Include inactive students checkbox to allow families to edit demographic information for students who are not enrolled at or currently enrolled in the school, but that's pretty uncommon. Uh, step eight, select the appropriate view options from the student drop down list in the general box to manage family access to specific data elements. You can hide, view only, or edit views, and we'll see that in the live look as well. Step nine, click the click to expand custom field settings link to view all available customized registration questions. Uh, not see, helpful tip, not seeing a question you would like to include on the online registration. You can head to file, define custom fields to create your own custom registration questions. Step 10, place a check mark in the include column checkbox to request that family answers a specific custom question during the registration process. So those are 
included and required. So this one would be required. Can we post your student's photo online? You have to answer that question before you can move on in the registration process. Fun fact, custom field questions will be displayed in the custom field tab during the online registration process in JMC Family. Helpful tip, place the check mark in the require column check box to prevent families from advancing through the registration process without answering specific custom field questions. Step 11, place a check mark in grade level checkbox to display custom field questions for students of a specific grade level. So this would be, can your, does your student drive a car to school? You wouldn't ask that for a kindergartner. So, oh, there it is. Is your student going to drive to school? Well, you wouldn't answer, ask it for these students. So you just put it in the 10th, 11th or 9th, 10th, 11th, whatever you want. Step 12, click the click to expand health custom field settings link to view all available custom health questions. Helpful tip, not seeing a health question that you would like to include on your online registration, just head to health, health custom fields, define health fields to create your customized health questions. Step 13, place a check mark in the include column checkboxes to request families answer a specific health field question before moving on the registration process. Helpful tip, place a check mark in the require column checkbox to prevent families from advancing through the registration process without answering specific health related questions. Step 14, click the save button to update your online registrations. And we're going to go back and take another live look. All right. So again, you go to JMC Family, Online Registration, Setup, Configuration Options, and we're going to go to the uh, Lake City Public School setting, the building setting. Click to expand the family. You got to allow these, allow emergency contact edits. You got to allow the health edits and all of these for the parents to have access to it. So Same Janine, with, this is your this is your reminder <laughs> about talking about the allow new student edition box. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. See, I would have already forgotten it. <laughs> what happens a lot of times is parents will go on. Do I have by in the district level? Did I give myself um, permission to mm, 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 family permissions? Did I give myself permission to go ahead? Yeah, allow parents that. Okay, good. So I'm sorry, I kind of got off topic here, but this part right here, allow new student addition. What happens sometimes in other schools is that families will log in and they'll start their registration process. And it will say, at, at some point it's going to say, you know, register your students. So some families have gone in and registered, you know, Penelope Pink, who has been at the school since kindergarten and she's now in eighth grade? Well, then they're going to add two data informations about that student. And so it's just going to get cumbersome and confusing. So you don't want them to add already existing students. Did I explain that okay, Rachel? Yep. And that was that was a common problem that we had at my school because we were, <clears throat> excuse me, preschool through six. Um, but preschool was called Learning Ladder Preschool, and then it got to, you know, Our Lady of Victory Elementary. So a lot of times parents, when their kiddos would move from the preschool up to kindergarten, they'd be like, well, I have a new kid in the building. So they'd create a record, but we already had a record in JMC. So we would usually turn that off during the registration period so that it didn't confuse our parents and we didn't end up with duplicate records. And then you would turn it on during the kindergarten roundup or whatever, too. Yep. Yep. And then during kindergarten roundup, you would use like the allow new student edition feature in online registration, along with um, new family enrollment for those kids who are brand new to your school to get all those records in the way that you want them. Exactly. Thank you for that explanation. Let's see. And again, um, do you want them to put in, uh, do you want them to include an active students? Yes or no. And then you can kind of go through here. Do you want them to be able to view the first name? the gender, um, you can, why do you think we have hide on this? View and edit? 
Um, yeah, I mean, there's some things that you maybe don't want parents okay, to let's... even see that's that's there, you know, because if it's there, then maybe they feel like they need to do something to it. Um, but like your first name, last name, you would really want that to be view only. You wouldn't necessarily want parents changing those items on record. So I'm, I'm thinking about sometimes if we would have parents that got remarried and they're in the process of changing the kid's last name too, but maybe the all the paperwork wasn't through yet. We'd want to make sure that we had paperwork on why that name was changing rather than just letting parents change it, if that makes sense. That absolutely makes sense. And that actually brings me to another um, point somebody had written in and said that the mom and dad got divorced so the mom went and changed the student's last name to her last name and again you have to have legal documentation to do that you don't want the parents to go in there and change really important things like that so thank you for that Rachel um, and birth date you'd probably want to hide or view only but you're not going to want them to change it because you're going to want to make sure that all this information is correct and sometimes Maybe. hiding some of those fields too makes it a little bit easier for the parents. I mean, that's a lot of information there. So if there's stuff that they don't that they don't necessarily need to see, like advisor, student ID, I don't know, especially in an elementary setting, do parents really need to know or care what the student ID is? Probably not. So just a way to maybe cut down on all the data that parents have to look at in that registration process. Oh yeah, that's a very, very good point. Thank you. Um, all right, custom fields, then you click on the custom fields, and that is where you get all the information. Let's see, is your student going to drive the car to school? Well, do you really want it for all of these people? You would uncheck it. But we're gonna let eighth graders drive. <laughs> and then save, you gotta remember to save all the time. And then you go down and you can read through your questions. And again, these are the custom field questions. If you would like to add more custom fields, you can go into the define custom fields. And we're gonna get into that later, I believe, right? Yes. But this yep. is where you would add or subtract your custom field questions. So. And, and then, I know in the presentation, it said, you know, to go to file and find the custom fields. But when you're in this, um, in the registration setup, Denise just showed you those super handy quick links to take you right to custom fields or right to the health field so that you can get there and add more questions if you need to right from this page. Which brings me to another comment. If you want to do that mid-year so that you'll have it for the following year. Let's see. How do we get there again? Um, is it under file or is it, or is it under, under edit? edit? I know. I was just wondering to see. <laughs> there it is. Um, is it? Yeah, no. It was under file, I thought. Define custom fields. There it is. It's just under online settings. About the fourth right one. There. there we go. So if, yeah, if you're mid year and you want to like add it because it's something that's important, you don't want to go through the whole registration process like we're doing. You can just go in here and go to file define custom fields, and then add your custom field from here. But again, we'll be showing you that here in a few minutes. Um, and same with the health custom fields. And then again, you can edit those in here as well. And we'll show you how to do that as well. Did I cover everything? That's it, Denise. Yep. One of the things that I did not point out is please make sure, I mean, we did talk about it at the very beginning, but please make sure that you're working in the correct school year because it's hard when you're in the office answering phones and you have to switch back to this school year and find a student and call the parent. And then all of a sudden you wanna go back to work on it. And if you're in 23, 24, you're gonna mess up your data because this would be just changing information for that school year. So when you're working on it, please give yourself a sticky note or something to make sure you're constantly working in the correct school year. That's a great point, especially if you have JMC open in multiple tabs, because <laughs> yeah. if you change the school year in one and then you go to another tab, uh, it will end up updating to whatever you changed it to in the previous tab. So you can't you can't really have it open in two different tabs in two different school years unless you're using two separate browsers. Exactly. Thank you for that. Um, and I think we've covered everything there. Am I correct? 
It looks good. Any questions for us? We are good to keep rolling. All righty. Creating custom fields and custom health questions. If you're tired of managing stacks of paper forms during registration, JMC Office off has a solution for you. Our custom field features allow you to create digital forms that can collect important information during online registration. This includes questions about permissions for posting student pictures on social media, or whether your child can be administered pain relievers amongst others. Uh, by using custom fields, you can eliminate the need for physical forms and greatly re reduce the likelihood of lost or incomplete information. This not only simplifies the registration process, but also helps to ensure that all necessary information is collected accurately and efficiently. So in JMC Office, you had to file, define custom fields to get started. And again, this is the long way, but we did show you the shortcut to get there. Uh, click the import button to import custom field questions from the previous year uh, into the current school year. So everything that you had in last year, you can just add it. Wait, where is it? Import right here. You just import that. You just click that and all the same questions will be imported. Step two, click the plus to add custom fields right here. Add custom fields button to add a new question for families to answer during registration. If you have created custom field questions of prior years, the important feature is a huge time saver as the questions from last year will be copied to this year's for you. Step three, place a check mark in the current year checkbox to include this question in the current year's registration process. Helpful tip, simply remove the check mark from the current year checkbox to keep a question in your custom fields list, but remove it from the online registration for this year. Step four, enter a question in the name field to define the data that you intend on collecting during the registration process. Step five, enter information in the additional information field to provide families with additional instructions related to the custom field questions. Step six, select text, numeric, date, or yes and no from the date from the data type right over here, where does the data type? Right here, data type. So you type in your questions and then the data type question drop down list to specify if the type of answers families can submit during the registration. Is it going to be a yes or no question, a numeric answer, text, date? Enter a character count in the length field when selecting text data type to to limit the length of a text response. For yes, no questions, choose the skip to choose to skip the specific questions on your query. If the answer is no, by selecting the appropriate skip to question from the drop down list. Step seven, select the appropriate radio button to define a permanence option. You're specific. That means that it clears the field after the school year, requiring families to enter a result during an online registration process each year. Um, Rachel, what would be a uh, year specific? Um, so year specific would be uh, like the question that's up here, like, is your student going to participate in a school's snack program? Well, you'd want to know each year if they're going to participate, because maybe you change your mind from one year to another. Um, and then year independent. Um, so I worked at a Catholic elementary school, and we would have a question on our custom fields. Is your family a member of the, the church that we were associated with? And that was probably not information that was going to change from year to year. So that was something that when uh, families answered it once, they didn't have to answer it again. But those things that you want to know each year, who's picking up? Is your kid going to be on the bus? Those are things that you want to check in with parents yearly and make sure you have the most up-to-date information. Perfect explanation. Thank you. Step eight, click the update button to add your custom field questions to the list or click the cancel button to discard your entry. Helpful tip, click the pencil icon to edit an existing custom field question or click the trash can icon to delete the question. Oh, we're back to the live look again. So we'll go to file, define custom fields and 
we've already imported it, correct? Yeah, they are imported, but I cannot stress enough the importance of that import button. Um, it just, it covers your bases. Like you're not sitting there retyping the questions like, oh, what did I ask last year? And then I, I was working with a school that forgot to ask, how is your kid getting home at the end of the year? <laughs> and had they just imported their custom fields or how's your kid getting home at the end of the day? If they had just imported those custom fields, all those questions are there. You don't have to try to remember it and reinvent the wheel every single time. You just hit that import button and you know they're all there. And then you can go through and say, hey, you know, maybe this one I don't need this year but then at least you have a list to work from. Okay. And so let's see, how do I edit here? Import, edit. Okay. This one, current year. So if I don't want to ask this question from year to year, if I want to keep it the same, I would uncheck this checkbox. Is that correct? That's it. All right. And if you want it in there, you just keep the check mark in there. Um, I suppose we could add one, huh? Let's add name. Does your family belong to our church? <laughs> and this may be a public school. We, we, I'm just showing you examples. Um, so this would be a yes, no question. So I'm going to come down and say yes or no. If the answer is no, did I say that right? If it's no, yes, then you'd want to not skip. We're going to want, does your family belong to our church? How do I want to say this, Rachel? If so, it's no, they're going to type in the church they belong to. No, not quite. Um, if if it is actually no. So this is uh, a really handy thing that JMC added to your yes, no type answers. So let's say that the question was, can we post your student's photo to social media? And let's say the family says no. Well, now they can skip to another question. Um, whereas if they say yes, maybe the next question is, can we post to Facebook? Can we post to Instagram? Those types of things. But if they've answered no, they don't have to specify which types of social media. So they can maybe skip down to the next question, which would be, what are your school, what are your students after school plans? So it's a way to, if you have conditional questions, where if there's a yes, then you want more information about that yes. But if there's a no, then they can skip those conditional things that would add more details, if that makes sense. Yeah, I think so. So let's let's do this one. Can we post your child's picture on social media? Yes, no answer, correct? Yeah. And, and you're specific. You... Every year we want to ask the the you're independent. Yeah. Every year we want to ask, are you know, do we have to, do you want us to do this? So then if I update, then what number was that one? Are we right there? So actually let's click the pencil icon. You're there you go. Okay. Yeah. And then where you have the yes, no, if answer is no, skip to question, click that drop down box. And now you can select the question that you would skip to. If you answered no, well, then you don't need to know about Facebook. You don't need to know about Instagram. Then you'd maybe want to skip down to a question that's not about social media because they already said they don't want their kids pictures posted. Got it. So let's get through all of those questions and then we'll just go on to graduation. Right, exactly. Oh, and that would allow families to skip past questions that don't apply to them if they've said no to a previous question. Got it. All right. Let's see if I can. Now nah, I don't want to go through that. That that will be shown in the next webinar, correct? Yes. Anything so else? I, what does this mean over here, Rachel? So now it sh that is just showing you that you have um, linked those questions together by saying uh, if they answer no, they would skip ahead. So that's showing you the questions that they would skip down to. Perfect. All right. Anything else that we should show on this? No, I don't think so. I'll just maybe reiterate what you were saying is that this presentation today is the first part in a three part series about online registration. So today we're just showing you how to prepare everything on the office side. And then the next presentation is going to be how families um, approach online registration, what it looks like from their end. And then the last one is going to be back on the office side, like how do I bring in all that data from families once they've submitted their online registration? So I believe that the series is going to go on. Um, I think maybe in two weeks is the next installation.
evaluation and then two weeks after that will be the final something like that well I will see that at the end perfect yeah and there is I mean it's not that easy that they just um change all their information and it goes right into your computer um you you never know what parents are going to put in there so you have to accept the registration forms correct yeah, the office the office always has that last say just to make sure that families didn't accidentally duplicate student records like we've talked about um and, and other things like that so the office always has that last set of eyes on the data before it is like brought into your uh, jmc database right exactly okay uh any questions before i navigate away from we here? do have a question from crystal and she wants to know if families can go through the registration process on their cell phones oh I think we've had that question before and Rachel, uh, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I do believe that the problem with that was they couldn't see all the fields. So they wouldn't necessarily um, fill out all the required questions so it wouldn't let them finish it up. So they can, but it's cumbersome. Am I correct, Rachel? That sounds familiar to me as well. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, you can turn your phone sideways and kind of scroll, but um, we, we recommend doing it on the computer. Does that sound good? Yeah. Yeah, righty. Now, creating custom health questions. Streamline the process of gathering important health-related information during online registration by utilizing custom field questions, health custom field questions. Creating these questions in JMC Office allows families to easily provide necessary health information, such as current medications, allergies, and more through free text, med medication tables, or allergy tables in JMC family. Custom health field response are then compiled and organized in the health module of the JMC office for future reference, providing a convenient and comprehensive resource for your school's health needs. Create custom health fields by logging into JMC office and going to health custom, health custom fields, define health fields. Step one, click the import button to import health custom fields questions from the previous year into the current year. Helpful tip, save time by using the health custom fields feature in JMC Office, which automatically copies questions from the previous year for you. Step two, click the add health custom fields link to add new custom health questions for families to answers, answer during registration. Helpful tip, click the pencil icon to edit or to edit an existing health custom field question or click the trash can icon to delete a question. Step three, place a check mark in the current year checkbox to activate the question in JMC family registration for the current year. Helpful tip to remove a question from the online registration while keeping it on your health custom fields list, you can uncheck the current year checkbox. Step four, enter a question in the name field to define the data you intend on collecting during the registration process. Step five, enter information on the additional information field to provide families with additional instructions related to the health custom field questions. Step six, select an option from the data type drop-down list to specify the type of answers families can submit during the registration process. And again, we've talked about that in the last section, which is text, numeric data, medication table. This is something different on here. Uh, allergies, I'm gonna go through the medication tables. To gather medication information, choose the medication table option, which provides a table for families to enter medication details. Allergy table, to gather allergy information, choose the allergy table option, which provides a table for families to enter allergy details. And then the yes or no questions, and we kind of went through that on the last time. Helpful tip. Select a, spe a specific question to skip to if a family answers no to a yes, no question by choosing the appropriate question from the skip to drop down list. Step seven, select the appropriate radio button to define the a perform a pertinence, per permanence option. Sorry about that. Year specific or year independence. Step eight, click the update button to save your question or click the cancel button to discard your changes. And a helpful tip, simply drag and drop your health custom field 
questions to organize them in the order they should appear on families, uh, appear to families during their online registration. So here we go. So we'll go to, again, if you're already in here, you can just click here. Otherwise you're gonna go to the, uh, what is it, health, uh, health custom fields, define health custom field questions, and that'll take you to the same spot. So again, you can reorganize these by just clicking, but you're gonna wanna make sure that when you do that, that your, your questions are not linked. If you moved one that's linked, like we showed you in the custom fields, um, it will mess everything up. So to edit, click in here and let's see, will your student be taking medications this year? Let's click into here. And this would be the data type would be medications. So the parents will see that from their side, which is it, uh, which medications they can choose from? Do you know? Um, right? It's actually a medication table. So I believe, <clears throat> I think there's like three elements that they fill in. So on the left, it's like uh, parents can enter in the type of medication. And then I believe they type in the dose and then they can um, explain what they're taking it for. I think there's three fields there. So it just kind of looks like an, like a spreadsheet where families put that in. So they, it's an easy way to add multiple medications and submit that all at once. Okay. And let's see, your student allergic to any medication, uh, take any, okay, here, should, would this one show? No, that no, that's just additional information. Um, I the where do you see the med tables? Is that what you're wondering? Well, I I was hoping that they could see what the parents see, but you can't really. Uh, no, that would be in the next um registration webinar. Yeah, it would be in the next. It would be in the next webinar. And the allergy table is very similar. I believe it says, you know, what are the allergies, and then like what are the symptoms of that allergy, so that um you know if your kiddo has a, an allergy to fish, um, you know, what would that look like if they were accidentally exposed in the lunchroom or something to that effect? So it asks what the allergy is and then what the symptoms are. Perfect. Okay. And again, we have the import and then the add new custom field. And if uh, you want this to be displayed, this one will not be displayed to the parents when they're going through registration because it's unchecked. Mm -hmm. If you want them to see it, and again, you might want to keep in all your questions just in case, you know, you want to use it another year, but not want to use it this year. So this will not be displayed this year, but you can still have the option to make it visible next year. Am I missing anything? Uh, not missing anything. I would just maybe point out now that you, while you're in this health custom field screen, the quick link now can take you back to online family registration. So that's super handy that those two things work so well together. Um, so that's one thing. And then the other thing I would say is if you have a school nurse, if you're lucky enough to have a school nurse, work with that person to set up those health fields because they will often have a, a great perspective and a good idea of what kind of information they need, whether that information needs to be verified by a health professional and, and that type of stuff. So I would say if you have a school nurse, work closely with that person to craft those health custom field questions. Perfect. Do we have any other questions? No, nope, no other questions. All right, pairing signable forms and downloadable content. During registration season, it's common for students and their families to have to acknowledge and sign various school documents. Fortunately, JMC offers a solution. Families can conveniently access and sign forms online to complete the registration process. For each form uploaded, import details such as description, deadline, and required e-signature status can be entered to keep families informed and ensure that the forms are signed and returned promptly. So in JMC Office, you head to JMC Family, Online Registration Setup, Upload Forms to get started on uploading and marking forms for signing. Step one, click the Add New button to begin adding a new signable form. Step two, click the Choose File button to browse for 
and begin uploading the form from your computer to JMC Office. Step three, click the upload button to the upload the signable forms to JMC Office. Step four, click the edit button to edit the sign signing information for the, for the form you just uploaded. Step five, enter a description of the form in the form instructions field to provide a more detailed description of the form to families. Helpful tip, add a little pizzazz to your message using the formatting tools. Step six, select the radio button to identify which students and contacts the form will be available to. Then fill out the appropriate fields highlighted below. Random, select one or more of the students at random, or you can select by grade. If you select by grade, you have to say from grade to grade. Uh, you select by advisor, you can select by activity or by course. Step seven, which is optional, place a check mark in the contact signature required check mark box to require an e-signature acknowledgement of the form um, from the primary contact. Helpful tip, place a check mark in the contact sig sig single signature checkbox to allow the primary contact to sign the selected form once for all students in the family. For example, um, does your student vaccinated? I don't know. Does your does your student have all that, you know, vaccines? Um, if they all do, you can put yes, because most parents are up to date. They don't want to go step by step on each student if they have six kids. Step eight, place a check mark in the student signature required checkbox to require an e-signature acknowledging the forms from students. I didn't say that right, did I, Rachel? It would be more like, yes, I've read the um handbook for all six of my students. I'm just yes. going to sign that once. Exactly. So if there's something that's going out to all parents of all students, regardless of grade level, then you would want to put that contact single signature. The handbook is an excellent example. If all the students have to acknowledge or all the parents have to acknowledge that they've read the handbook for all their students, rather than signing it for every kid in the family, they sign it once and that signature applies to all of the kids associated to them. Perfect. Thank you. Step nine, enter a date in the signature date line field to define a due date for primary contacts and or student signatures. Step 10, click the update button to save your changes or click the cancel button to discard your changes. Helpful tip to delete a form from the online registration, select the desired form from the list and then click del the delete button on your keyboard. So let's take a live look. Whoops, there we go. Okay, Rachel, you're gonna have to walk me through this one here. So we're going down to JMC family, online registration, set up, whoops. Yep, you're right, set up and then upload forms. And so Earth Week participation, I added that one, um, you could, edit it if you want to go in there and edit it. Um, I can add a new one. Choose my form from my computer. Let's see if I have um, desktop. And I'll do this one. And then I upload it. <laughs> 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 Let's try again. How about, um, I don't really have anything on here, do I? I think that's okay, Denise, though. That kind of shows them how to do it. And then let's just go into one that's already there and click edit. Okay. So this would be the form and you can decide who, you know, you can put the form instructions that they have to fill out step one through 10 or whatever. And then you can pick by random grade advisor activity. If you do grade, you can go uh, all the grades that are included in that question or the signature form uh, required. Um, and again, this one means that if they have six kids, they only have to sign it once for this, for this question. But this one, if it's like, do you want your child to participate in Earth Week? Well, you would probably want some kids to and some kids not to possibly. And so then 
they would have to fill it out individually. Is that correct, Rachel? Yep. Okay. Uh, and then if you need your student signature, they have to sign it. Um, and then you could put in a deadline date, just click the calendar icon. And that doesn't prevent them from filling it out, but at least it kind of gives you a, a red flag that when it should be filled out by. Rachel, what else am I missing? Uh, I would maybe just add, um, so what this page does is actually it allows you to get a signature from parents acknowledging that they saw whatever that form is. It's not like if I'm sending out a form that I want a signature like right on that form, if that makes sense. Um, the third installment of the online registration webinar series, we're going to look at what those signatures do. So it's really just an acknowledgement that you've been given the information you need from the school. So I'm acknowledging that I got the handbook, or I'm acknowledging that my student can participate in a field trip. Um, so, so they have the form and then you get the signature, but it's not like a signature is going right onto a form. Okay, perfect. Which is less paperwork, correct? Yeah, absolutely. Any, anything else? Um, I don't have anything else, but we did have a question come in from Logan. And Logan is asking when families sign the electronic forms online, um, they've run into the issue that parents cannot do it from a cell phone smoothly. Do signature pads work with JMC when connected to a laptop? Or how do other districts do it when some families do not have access to a device? That's a great question, Logan. Um, there's a couple of ways that you can go about this. Do you want, did you, I don't want to step on your toes, Denise, but please, you want. please go ahead. <laughs> um, so there's, there's a couple different ways. I, uh, I would have students, um, especially if like grandma was the primary contact, maybe you just didn't have a lot of experience with technology. I would often say, Hey, why don't you meet me at the school at such and such time? And then we would do it on my device. And um, I would give her the mouse to be able to sign those forms. The other thing, and maybe we'll just, why don't we just go to this page? Let's, um, Denise, let's go to um, just to form signatures down two spots from where you are on the menu tree. There you go. So this shows all of the signatures as they come in. But say someone's really struggling with it, in the quick links over to the right, you can select record, record paper signatures. So if you had a parent in the building and they just couldn't, you know, couldn't quite work that or they wanted to sign um, a hard copy, you can give them that form. They can, they can sign it on paper and then you just select the parent, the contact, the student, yep, that they've signed it or maybe they've declined, maybe they don't wanna sign it. And then um, why don't you select sign, hit signed, and then hit save once, Denise, and then we'll look up Rachel Hale and hit save. So now it shows that that paper signature was recorded. Go ahead and close that. And if you scroll down, you'll see right there, scroll down a little farther, Denise. Uh, in the middle. I'm sorry. Oh, okay. Sorry. There, oh, oh, there we go. There, there we go. You, it shows that you have a paper signature on file. Um, in terms of whether or not a signature pad, like an external signature pad, would work on a laptop, I'm not entirely sure. I can tell you I use an external mouse pad and I can sign JMC forms with an external mouse pad, like a um, one that's Bluetooth. So I would imagine that if it's associated with your computer that you could, um, but that just might take a little trial and error. Okay. Any other I think questions? I covered all the bases, Denise. I think we, we did it. <laughs> Any other questions? Uh, no other questions. All righty. Adding downloadable content. If you have a computer use policy, course description booklet or course handbook that you want to share with families, you can easily do so using JMC Office. By uploading these important documents, families can access them directly from the JMC Family Portal via the online registration module. This eliminates the need for printing and distributing the physical copies of the forms, saving both time and money. To begin uploading your files, simply log into the JMC office and navigate to JMC Family, Online Registration, Setup, Downloadable Content. Step one, click the Add 
record link to select the document from your computer for families to download in JMC Family. Helpful tip, leave the check mark in the is active checkbox to make the file available for families in the current year. Step two, enter a name in the link name displayed field to label the link displayed for the families to click during the registration process to download the file. Step three, click the choose file button to browse for and begin uploading the file from your computer to JMC office. Step four, enter a description of the document in the file description field to provide further explanation of the document to families before it, they download it. Step five, enter the number in the sort order field to place downloadable files in numerical order when viewed by families. Step six, click the save link to save this downloadable file and make it ready for families to download during the online family registration process or the cancel link to discard the changes. Let's take a live look at this. Let's see, we're gonna head up here again. JMC family online registration. Um, upload forms. Just one more up. One more up. Downloadable content, exactly. All right. Um, so here's one. Here's our elementary school handbook. If we're going to add a record, you do the same thing. You choose the file, and then you choose your hand handbook from your desktop. Cancel it. Um, you choose the file from your desktop. Uh, link displayed name, file description, and then you can decide on what order you want it. Um, let's see. So all, what else, Rachel, do I need to explain here? I think that's it. Um, so this is just really providing any information that you want families to have access to, um, not necessarily only during online registration, like you wouldn't want them to only see the handbook during registration. So as long as you have that is active, um, checkbox check. They can see it throughout the school year. Um, but we used this a lot in our online registration. Number one, we'd have the handbook there, but then we would have other things that some families might need, but not necessarily everybody. So if we had students who had food allergies and needed um, special accommodations in the lunchroom, we would have those forms there so families could print them off if they needed them and then could bring that into the school. Um, if they had uh, medication forms that need to be signed by a doctor. So any of those things that in the past you would print out at registration and hand that stack of papers to parents, um, you can put those papers here. So um, maybe not everybody needs them, but you want them to have access to them. That's where you can put this stuff or things that you want everyone to have access to like a computer use policy or your handbook and that type of stuff. Perfect. Are there any questions? No questions right now. All right. And we're just going to go on to JMC News and upcoming events. Uh, let's see. On the 18th, we have, in case you missed it, utilizing the features of JNC collaboration tools. On the 23rd, for the Minnesota schools, we have our Minnesota MCC EdFi work session. And then on the 24th, in case you missed it, utilizing the features of JMC refreshed new family enrollment portal. On May 1st, May Day, Nebraska end of year state reporting and May 8th, implementing the back to school online registration process. So that's the one we've been talking about, correct? And on the 9th, MCCC at by reporting, we'll go through that again for our Minnesota schools. So with teacher conference scheduler, teachers can block off time slots, giving families a crystal clear view to their availability and the power to set up all of the teacher conferences from one place. Are you interested? Request the module at sales at jmcinc.com. Who's ready for summer break? Let's kick off the fun at summer conference in Minnesota on June 18th and in Iowa on the 20th of June, where JMC will treat your team to sizzling games, prizes, food, fully loaded swag bags, and JMC innovations. To top it off, speaker Joe Beckman will stop by with his guitar for feel-good tunes and a talk on why human connection matters. 
did we mention the school who sends the most attendees to the conference will win a pipe and hot pizza party for their entire building? Grab your tickets today. Do you want to experiment with scheduling without dirtying up your live data? You can enter the JMC Sandbox. Our training video will show you how to use the JMC Sandbox site to think outside the box with scheduling building. Dig into your JMC innovations over on YouTube. Dig into this JMC innovations over on YouTube. Uh, two new reasons to chair JMC's gate and general store. From streamlining events, admissions to an easy way to sell, track, and report on to report on school merch via your own virtual store, these portals will help boost school community, community engagement. Stay, stay tuned for the fall launch. Thank you so much for joining us at this week's webinar.